I'd like to present to you a uh, a means for putting manifesting into your life based upon knowing and based upon being independent of the good opinion of other people and bring it all together. And it goes like this. This has been my observation. What you really, 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 that's four really, want, you will get. Now the four really stand for this. The first really stands for wish. I wish I could get a promotion. I wish I could get rid of this coal. I wish I could make more money. I wish I could have a better relationship. I wish. We start with a wish. So that's the first really. But all you need all four to manifest. So just wishing is not good enough. You have to go to the second really, and the second really is called desire for me. And desire is different from a wish in that with a desire you are willing to ask. Ask and you shall receive. And those aren't just empty words from a spiritual text. They literally work for me. If I am in a place where I'm writing and I don't seem to know what direction to go or I don't have the right information or whatever, I ask. And invariably after I ask, the telephone rings. It happened, what, last week or ten, two weeks ago or so. I was sitting in, uh, in Marco Island, the only person that on the planet who had my phone number was my wife and my other wife, Deepak. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking about, I'm not sure how to say this, I'm not quite sure, you know, and I'd, I'd really like to have a good quote, and the phone rings, and it's Deepak. And I said, I was just thinking about you and asking if I could get information, he said, well, I got your message in the field. <laughs> I'll let him explain the field, all right? <laughs> and he gave me this wonderful quote from the Ojibwe, if you recall, and, and I wrote in this essay that I was writing exactly what had happened and how it transpired. And I have found that when I stop wishing, I mean, I don't stop wish, but I add to my wishing asking out loud. Please cooperate with me in helping me to create what it is that I would like to have in my life. Asking out loud, asking God, or whatever God means to you. And, and then stepping back and just watching, and just noticing. It's called managing coincidences and synchronicity and some of the things that Deepak will be speaking about. The third really stands for will or intention you shift from I wish I had it to would you please help me to have it to now adding to that I will create this in my life I will have this show up for me in my life I intend to get it there's no doubt there and the fourth really stands for passion or what I call hardening of the will. And when you harden the will, what you do is you eliminate anybody else outside of you sullying your picture or telling you that you can't get it. When I tell people about learning to manifest, I always tell them, whatever you do, don't tell anybody what it is you want to manifest. Don't tell your best friend, don't tell your relatives, don't tell your soulmate. Keep it to yourself. Why would you keep it to yourself? Because when you tell somebody else what it is you're going to manifest, you immediately move over here into the world of the ego. And you have to defend it, and you have to explain it. And manifesting does not take place from the world of particles. It takes place from the world of the observer, the spirit. So you want to keep the ego out of it as much as you possibly can. And the way to do that is to have it to be a relationship between you and God, whatever God means to you. So you've got 
wish, desire, intention, and passion. And if you look carefully at people in your life and in your life experience who have been good at manifesting what they want into their life, you will find that they follow these specifics almost to a T. And they never allow anybody else's opinion or negative assessment to influence them in any way. They have a passion about what it is they want to create. Today there are no new cases of polio in the world today or just an isolated few because of the passionate will and determination of one person who was told you can't get funding, you can't do it this way, this is not possible, this isn't the way we do things, this is the way the scientific community works. And Jonas Salt didn't care about that. I mean, he had that single mind. And when I was reading about people like Michelangelo and Da Vinci, I mean, all of the people who told him that the Sistine Chapel couldn't be painted, you can't do such a thing. Imagine laying on your back for four years, not ever thinking about it not being possible to do. Now, that's the good news. If you can learn to put your attention on what you want, to ask for it, and to intend that it will attract into your life, and be passionate about it, independent of whether anybody else likes it or doesn't like it, you literally will create it. Because you think what you think about is what expands. You act upon your thoughts, as it says in the Old Testament. As you think, so shall you be. It is out of that invisible world that you attract things into your life. So that's the good news. Here's the bad news. What you really, 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 or really, don't want, you will also get. <laughs> And this is truly the problem for people who are not good at manifesting into their life. Now, I'm speaking about this not as a materializer, but as someone who in 57 years has been able to literally attract whatever I've put my attention on in my life. And it's not because I'm more intelligent, I'm more blessed, I'm luckier, I'm richer, I'm anything like that. It's because I have followed these principles in my life. I have always been a scurvy elephant. <laughs> and I've never listened to anyone out there telling me I mean I listen and I'm polite about it but I left the tribe I left the tribe a long time ago they don't know I've left <laughs> they don't they still send me invitations to all tribal functions <laughs> and I rarely attend and they explain that away by saying oh that's Wayne that's just the way he is you know how he is you can't tell him anything. That's fine. My mother, who was 81, asked me last week when I was going to get a job. 